I want to talk about something that seems to be making a few rounds lately on the internet, and that's bringing back up this idea of a Switch Pro. You know, that supposed upgraded Switch that exists behind the scenes that Nintendo is preparing to drop on us at a moment's notice, at least that's what people tell me, it will not only be more expensive than the current Switch offerings, it will also be packing a significant power boost, and with new technology landing all the time, it could even be something that could be considered an entirely new generation of Switch hardware. Of course, there hasn't even been a whiff of an actual leak info on this beyond a few rather vague reports from places like the Wall Street Journal. Or at least, that would be true. If it wasn't for the fact that Sharp announced their IGZO displays would be used in a future Nintendo device. The IGZO display technology is a rather big leap over the current LCD tech Switch and Switch Lite are both now confirmed to be using. Not only is it extremely power efficient, it's also a near bezel-less like display, allowing a future Switch to have a screen that gets rid of the pretty massive bezel that it's currently rocking. It also has peak brightness that blows the current LCDs out of the water, and it's much more color accurate, and can actually display 4K at less power draw than the current screens. There are a lot of other differences as well, like higher refresh rates and lower latency. All of this does come at a cost though, as the IGZO displays are among some of the best on the market, and as such, have a much higher cost than the current LCD displays. There was a thought back in August that maybe Switch Lite or the Switch Revision would use these screens, aiding in their battery life. Now that we know that isn't the case, it is the one piece of definitive evidence we have that something else is in the works. After all, even the Switch Pro moniker is merely a made-up term with no real backing behind it. No, the Switch Pro, whenever Nintendo does bring it to the market, won't be a PlayStation 5 or an Xbox 2. We're not looking at real-time ray tracing here with PCI Gen 4 SSD speeds, but we could be looking at something that is capable of producing slightly better than PlayStation 4 levels of performance. Not really quite to the Pro level, of course, at least in some areas. One area that should see a huge boost is the RAM. With LPDDR5 RAM going into mass production of late, specifically at the 12GB spec for mobile, this makes it an excellent candidate to appear in a Pro model of Switch. The biggest advantage beyond the massive increase in RAM amount is the RAM transfer speeds. The current Switch RAM transfers at around 25GB per second, whereas LPDDR5 RAM exceeds 50GB per second. That is still short of PlayStation 4's 100 gigabyte per second plus, you know, it's actually higher than that speeds, but this is one of the great sacrifices when you're using mobile technology. Many mobile devices, in particular phones, are going to be rocking 12 gigabyte of RAM as a standard at really affordable prices very soon. This makes the RAM even cheaper for Nintendo. The real question mark is how will the Switch Pro approach the literal chip? Many figured for a long time it would simply be the Tagger X2, a chip that was rebranded for smart cars. Its boost wouldn't be massive over the Tagger X1, but it would represent a speed increase on the CPU and GPU side, to a margin that is better than the current iterations. The problem now is that new Surface devices from Microsoft are coming out featuring 7 nanometer mobile chips that are putting out 2 teraflops of performance, or basically a super thin and portable PlayStation 4. So far, nothing from NVIDIA has even been rumored to be worked on that comes close to that performance in the mobile space. As pointed out to me by Super Metal Day 64 and Review Tech USA, shout out to you guys for updating me on all of the Switch info, sometime over the last few months, NVIDIA stopped following Nintendo on Twitter. It's interesting, because for the rest of the Switch's life, to this point, the companies did follow each other on social media which is pretty commonplace when you have a very public business relationship. NVIDIA were even the ones to state publicly that they had a 10-year agreement with Nintendo. Of course, we don't know the details of that agreement, but if NVIDIA felt they needed to unfollow Nintendo without even a sniff of a problem publicly, one has to wonder if Nintendo started shopping around with other partners for future Switch versions or even a new generation of Switch. It made sense to partner with NVIDIA when they did, because they had the foremost mobile gaming chip on the market back in 2015 when Switch was being conceptualized and created. But since 
Then, NVIDIA sort of abandoned that mobile gaming space, while well, AMD, on the backs of their new desktop and server architecture, has successfully taken that progress and applied much of it to the mobile space. Nintendo has worked with AMD for decades, including on tech inside the 3DS. It's highly unlikely a partnership with NVIDIA would have damaged the reputation of Nintendo with AMD. Nintendo would obviously be aware of the progress being made by Team Red in their space and maybe shifting over to a new chipset. If this is true, this would explain why Nintendo has been hiring people the past year to work on operating system integrations. Yes, of course, this is all speculative, but since Nintendo is a business, it would behoove them to consider all options and make the best decisions for them, both for what they want the tech to do and what will make them the highest profit margins with the next-gen competitors staring them in the face. Nintendo cannot compete directly with the future systems launching in 2020. Nintendo knows that. Heck, we all know that. Their place in the market is not being a market leader in terms of performance. Rather, it's in providing, quote-unquote, good enough performance at, on the platform to be played on a TV and on the go, and it gives console-like experiences at a satisfactory level. Of course, a lot of this tech I am talking about is new and expensive and may price Switch Pro out of the market. And that's why everything up to this point may actually sound like it might be about a Nintendo Switch 2 coming as early as 2021, so there's that extra year of time for parts to become cheaper to lead to a cheaper launch price, maybe at $399 or under. It's always possible the original plan for the Pro model would be shifted to a new generational leap. That's just the realities of the way technology advances you have plans plans change over time and that could just be what's going on uh it would be interesting if that's the case because i could see how maybe breath of the wild 2 or whatever they call it may be delayed for such a launch but uh we'll have to see the other side of the coin is where we have to remember that nintendo has talked about a family of switch systems since day one that family right now is basically two-pronged. You have your normal base switch, which has been replaced with a slightly upgraded version that gives better battery life, but it's still the same switch underneath pretty much everything that matters performance-wise. Then you have the Switch Lite, which is portable only. It ditched the ability to dock with a TV so you could only play it one way. A switch that sits on your TV and only does that could also be up for bat. And that would end up being a Switch Pro, a souped up overclock switch that can't be taken with you is possible in 2020. Of course, so is the original Switch Pro we talked about a year ago. Heck, anything is possible at this point because we just don't know. Well, beyond the fact that it'll probably use an IGZO display. The future has not been written, at least not publicly. The only thing I do know is that more is coming. More is always coming and the possibilities they're simply exciting now tell me what would you like to see happen with the nintendo switch pro the nintendo switch 2 down in the comments do you want one that's just sitting under tv only do you want it to be souped up and super powerful and trying to aim to be at least a playstation 4 do you want uh a portable playstation 4 like what microsoft's basically providing would you like uh nintendo to ditch the switch altogether and go back to the traditional console route and try to chase clout and chase power with playstation 5 and the next xbox i'm very curious what you guys want to see nintendo do with their next more powerful device whatever it ends up being because right now uh there's a lot of cloud there's a lot of smoke but we don't really know uh, what the fire for all of it is so uh i want to thank you guys for tuning in i hope this was insightful i hope that this made you think a little bit uh this is an editorial video uh, i haven't done one of these in a while but uh i really wanted to talk about the switch pro and i thought it felt appropriate now at a time when everyone else seems to uh, want to bring it back up even though there hasn't really been any new information and we're probably not going to see any new information i think we're to the point now that uh, any rumors and leaks or and stuff regarding switch pro will not arrive on our doorstep until uh it's pretty much about to be announced you know we might get like a little two-week rumor leak thing happening before it gets announced or something but uh hey if you were asking me when are we going to hear about switch pro or the next switch sometime next year i think we'll we'll see some confirmation in some way it might not be an announcement it could just simply be an interview where nintendo says yeah well of course we're working on the next switch or something like that but uh that would count in my book as them confirming it anyways but 
Uh, we'll see what happens. I want to thank you guys for tuning in. I am Nathaniel Robojans from the Nintendo Prime. You know what to do if you like this video. You drop a like on the video. You share it with your friends. You subscribe for more content. You hit that bell icon so you get notified when new videos do go up. And that's all I got for you today. Hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll catch you in the next one.